Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One, Good Vibrations. I'm here to describe for you a notion for an analog band stop filter design that I just sort of dreamed up. I don't see why it wouldn't work, but you would uh, want to test it in your lab and, and find out. Someday maybe I'll get off my lazy rear end and test something like this in my own lab. But for now, I'd like to just outline the basic description for you. Remember what a low-pass filter looks like? An analog passive low-pass filter using an inductor and a capacitor. You put an inductor in series and a capacitor in parallel with your signal path like that. So the inductor attenuates more and more as the frequency goes up and the capacitor attenuates more and more as the frequency goes down and at a certain cutoff frequency uh, you end up with a transition between passing low frequency signals and attenuating high frequency signals. The capacitor tends to short circuit the signals more and more as the frequency goes up, whereas the inductor tends to attenuate them more and more as the frequency goes up. Contrarywise, as the frequency goes down, the inductor attenuates the signals less and less, and the capacitor shorts out the signals less and less. So the lower the frequency, the better the result, the more signal will get through this thing. All right, that's just well and good. A high pass filter works just the other way around. You put a capacitor in series and an inductor in parallel with the signal path. The capacitor tends to attenuate the signals more and more as the frequency goes down and less and less as the frequency goes up. Whereas the inductor does just the opposite. It attenuates, it short circuits the signals more and more as the frequency goes down and short circuits them less and less as the frequency goes up. So the higher the frequency, the better the result. Now suppose that you have a low pass filter and a high pass filter together, just sitting side by side. You have a low pass and you have a high pass. Now we've seen how we can connect them in series if the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter is higher than the cutoff frequency of the high pass filter and we connect them in series we get a band pass filter. But you can't get away with that same kind of arrangement and make a band stop filter. What you need to do first of all is make the low pass filters frequency response or cutoff frequency lower than that of the high pass filter just for our argument's sake. Let's say we have a low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 5 megahertz. And let's say we have a high pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 7 megahertz. Now, let's suppose that we want to create a band stop filter where there's a certain transition range where both filters will attenuate the signal, but below that range and above that range signals will get through. We need to connect them somehow in parallel. Well, I'm kind of messing this up. I'm getting things backwards. Let me try this again. Here's the input. For simplification, I'll just use a single line to represent the whole input. Here is a splitter of some sort or another. Splits the signal into two equal parts. 
and sends them to both filters in parallel like this. Then the outputs of these filters get combined by a combiner, that's C, to get the output. A combiner is just sort of a splitter connected backwards, an unsplitter. So the signal goes in, gets divided equally, goes through the low pass filter and the high pass filter at the same time, then the output of those filters goes through the combiner. So we go through the splitter, we split the signal like that, the two filters, the combiner, and the output. Now the the low pass filter will pass frequencies below 5 megahertz. So anything below 5 megahertz will get through this way. If it's below 5 megahertz, though, the high pass filter is going to choke it off. So nothing really is going to get through this filter. But something will get through here, so you'll get a signal at the output. Now, on, on the other hand, if you have a frequency of more than 7 megahertz, the signal is going to get choked off by this low-pass filter, so it isn't going to be able to get through here. But it will get through the high-pass filter because the cutoff frequency is 7 megahertz, so anything above that will get through. Now, let's suppose that our frequency is between 5 and 7 megahertz. We'll just call our frequency F. Our frequency is greater than 5 megahertz but less than 7 megahertz. What's going to happen then? Let's just suppose it's 6 megahertz. All right, 6 megahertz signal comes in like this. The low pass filter has a cutoff of 5 megahertz. It's going to choke it off. Nothing's going to get through here. So it tries to go through here. But this is a high pass filter that only lets things above 7 megahertz get through. So again, it chokes it off. And that'll happen with all frequencies, theoretically, all frequencies F, greater than 5 and less than 7 megahertz, assuming that we have very, very sharp, very steep cutoffs in these filters. So that is a band stop or band rejection filter. Now the question becomes, what do you use for these? How does a splitter work? How does a combiner work? You know, and I went on the internet trying to figure that out with cable splitters uh, for my internet connection. I don't have television anymore, so I don't need the cable splitter box in there to split between the internet and the TV. So I took it out and just made a direct splice, very carefully insulated it, because I wanted, you know, to be the most elegant and the best. But so how, do you, how do these things actually work? And the answer is I wasn't able to find a very good schematic diagram of one on the internet that... Um, would let me do that. But I have an idea for how to make a splitter box that would work very well at the frequencies we've just been talking about. Here is your input signal. And what you do is you send it through, you just split it directly. You just make a direct split and then you send the signals divided in half like that to opto-isolators. Remember those? Opto-isolators. O-I. Then you take the outputs from there. That's how you can do that. Great! The opto-isolators look identical in terms of impedance to this, this uh, signal here, so you should be able to get away right here with just a simple splitter splice. You know, and don't even need a transformer or anything. Then the combiner would work just the other way around. The combiner, you just flip these things backwards like this.
There's one of the inputs. There's the other input. They see identical impedances. Comes out identical impedances. Gets combined like that. These optoisolators prevent any interaction from occurring that could unbalance this. Or, when in the other case, when it was flipped around backwards, going the other way. So, that's how you can get a band stop filter. So again, we'll make the, the diagram of that thing. Very simply, there's your input. Opto isolator, opto isolator, low pass, high pass, Oops. Back up on that one a little bit. Another opto isolator, another opto isolator. Connect them together. Voila. If that cutoff is lower than that one, you get a band stop in between the two cutoffs. Stan Jibalisco, W1GB. Now test it in your lab. See if it works. It should. If it doesn't, tweak it. Make it work. You'll, you'll figure it out. Stan Jibalisco, W1 Good Vibrations. Signing off for now, 73, which means best regards, and so long.